Hey, what's up guys? So we're gonna do a couple videos on March and the, basically the algorithms. We're gonna break it up into a couple sections. First one's gonna be massive bleeding. Second video is gonna be airway and respirations. And the third one is gonna be circulation, head injury, hypothermia. So I chose to do massive bleeding because it's kind of the big bread and butter part of March. Uh, this is gonna be TC3 stuff. So we talk about you know TC3, we got our IFAX, you got your little bleeder kits. We talk about adjuncts or tools we can use. So we've got our tourniquets. We've got the cat, we've got the TMT, we've got the soft T with the metal windlass, and we have the X-Stat. There's the X-Stat fat and the X-Stat, you know, kind of slim. So it depends on the type of the wound. It's usually used for that inguinal region as long as it's a linear wound. It fills it up and they're basically just pellets that are radio opaque. They used to be uh, clotting, but not anymore after like 2012. I think the FDA asked them just to do friction, or I'm sorry, force. So they inflate, they're basically like those dinosaurs and you're throwing a, a sink, they inflate put it in the wound, kind of pull this out, wrap it with a pressure dressing, and it just applies pressure to the inside of the wound. So massive bleeding. So we've got our tourniquets, we've got X stats, we've got combat gauze, we got the, the IT clamp that you could use. Basically anything you can use to stop a compressible bleed. So what does that mean? So non-compressible bleeds are inside the box. That's gonna be your TXA, things like that. You're not gonna stuff the, you know, inside the box with a trunk. Compressible wounds or extremity wounds, you got your arms, you got your legs, and that's pretty much it. No tourniquets on the neck, obvious reasons. So, massive bleeding. What do we do, how do we stop that? All right guys, so here's my simulated patient. Let's say he's got a wound just above the knee, right? So this is gonna be a hasty tourniquet, not a deliberate. What I'm gonna kinda do here is I'm gonna check out my tourniquet, I'm gonna make sure the buckle is on the outside so I can pull friction, and I want the plastic part of the cat to be over where I believe the vessels are. So going underneath the knee, and apple bin, Bring it up as high as I believe I can get it, high and tight. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push and pull. So as I'm pulling on this tourniquet, I'll kind of grab underneath, I'll feed myself the slack and make sure I get all that additional line out. So I want this tourniquet to be tight before I put it on. So you see here, it's tight on the skin. I don't have a lot of slack to it. I don't want to have to turn this windlass more than three times. Eh, four maybe, depending, but as I turn the windlass, one, it's already tightened up. Two, I can't even turn it a second time. So I put it in there right at the time, and I will check the pulse. Pulse is gone, make sure I annotate, and the tourniquet is, is effective. So if I move my patient, I reassess interventions, because this is one of your major interventions. Every time I move them, log roll them, pick them up, reassess that intervention. After about five to 10 minutes of that initial insult, I'm gonna reassess the intervention. The reason being is with shock, what if uh, he was guarding because he has that pain injury, his muscle's super tight, and now five to 10 minutes later, you've given him some pain management, he's relaxing, I wanna make sure this is still occluding that vessel. You notice I have plastic piece kind of midline here. That way I can, it's where I believe the vessels are, the nerve artery vein coming down the center on the single long bone, not the double long bone. Cause I mean, with here, you're just kind of crushing those bones into that vessel. If that's all you got, that's all you got, but prefer it here. 